All right, it's Dr. Lloyd here. We've got chapter four, tissue. Okay, this is a very important chapter. It really uh, gives information about a lot of different tissues in the body. Okay, so the purpose of uh, today's talk is to talk about tissues uh, by comparing. We've got epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. Then, uh, how do cutaneous, mucous, and serous membranes differ? Then we'll have a little blurb on how tissues are repaired and some developmental aspects of germ layers. All right, so uh, each individual body cell is specialized, and tissues are a group of cells that have similar uh, function and uh, they have a similar means or, or aim. And histology is the study of tissue. There are four different types of tissue, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. And so we've got nervous, which is brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Muscle, which is skeletal, cardiac, or smooth. Epithelial, which forms boundaries between different environments. Uh, for protection, secretion, absorption, filtration. Uh, so epithelium will line the gut uh, and also uh, constitute glands, um, as well as the epidermis, the uh, surface of the skin. And then finally, connective tissue, which supports, protects, uh, binds the other tissues like bones, tendons, uh, and then some, uh, some soft padding tissue. So the epithelium is a sheet of cells that covers the body surfaces or cavities. And uh, there are two main forms. There's uh, covering and lining uh, on the external and internal surfaces, like skin. And then there's glandular epithelia, which are secretory tissues in glands, for example, salivary glands. So the epithelium, the main function is to protect, to absorb, filter, excrete, secrete, and for sensory reception. Now epithelial tissue has five different characteristics. For, firstly, it's polar, which means there, is, there, is, uh, there are two sides to it. And there are specialized contacts uh, supported by connective tissue and Epithelium is avascular, which means that there are no blood vessels. However, it is innervated, so there are nerves, and regeneration occurs readily. So let's deal with the polarity. So the cells have an apical and a basal surface. So the apical is the free side, the upper side, which is exposed to the cavity. Some apical surfaces have microvilli to increase uh, the surface area of those membranes. The basal surface is the lower attached side that faces inwards towards the body, uh, and this attaches to the basal lamina. So here we go. Here's some epithelium. We've got our apical surface on the outside, the open space, and then we've got our basal surface right next to this underlying connective tissue. You see this loose connective tissue underlying it. So this, this basal layer is the, the bottom of the cells. And you can see there are, looks like columnar cells coming out here. You also have on some cells uh, a basal lateral membrane, which would be the left or the right. There are specialized contacts. These are going to be tight junctions or desmosomes. And uh, all connective tissue is, is support, I'm sorry, uh, all epithelia is supported by connective tissues. There's the reticular lamina, which is deep to the basal lamina, so that's, that's uh, beneath it. It's a network of collagen fibers. And you have your basement membrane made up of basal cells. And this reinforces the epithelial sheet. It resists 
stretching and tearing. It defines the boundary and it makes up a number of stem cells that will divide to regenerate that epithelium when it is damaged. Okay, let's look at the classification of epithelia. So simple epithelia are a single layer thick. Stratified are two or more layers. Squamous are flattened. Cuboidal are cube-like. Columnar are column-like. And so here we've got a surface, the apical surface, which is towards the outside. We've got squamous, uh, simple squamous epithelium here. And you've got a basal surface. Here we've got uh, a stratified squamous. It looks like uh, it looks like squamous to a cuboid. This might be uh, a transitional epithelium. So we've got squamous. These are the squish cells. Cuboidal, cuboid, columnar, column shaped. So the simple epithelium, the squished ones, are specialized for absorption, secretion, and filtration. And this is because a number of species can diffuse across that cell, uh, get to the other side, um, which is where it's going to be needed. So some good examples of this are the kidney and the lung, as well as the endothelium of lymphatic and blood vessels in the heart, So here um, are some air sacs, and these are, this is a simple squamous layer, uh, going to be very important in diffusion of gases. So the main function is to allow species to diffuse and or filter through the epithelium. And some good examples are the kidney, Glomeruli, the uh, air sacs, which this is a, a picture of, uh, the lining of the heart, blood vessels, and lymphatics, as well as the cirrhosis, which we'll go into in a little bit. Okay, cuboid epithelium are still simple, and these are involved in secretion and absorption. They form the walls of the smallest ducts and glands and mid many kidney tubules. So this is, uh, it looks like, uh, you can see different tubules here, but we have cuboidal epithelial cells. This is the apical side, the one that faces the lumen. The basal side faces the basal lamina or the basement membrane. Okay, then there's simple columnar epithelium. This is a, still a single layer, but these are tall, closely packed cells. Some have cilia, some have microvilli. Okay, so we can see uh, some, some cells here that are column shaped. Um, there, uh, there are, well, excuse me, there, there's an, an apical side which faces the lumen and a basal side, which is at the, uh, uh, well, the basal cell layer. And the basal layer is where the stem cells are going to uh, be active to reproduce this epithelium if there is, is any problem. But you can see here in this picture how the nuclei are all lined up. The function is going to be absorption, so movement across this from apical to basal, secretion of mucus via some goblet cells. There's cilia, which helps to propel mucus uh, down the apical surface. And then there are non-ciliated types, especially in the digestive tract. So another type is pseudostratified columnar so these are columnar epithelium, but they're not simple. These are what's called pseudostratified. So cells vary in height and appear to be multilayered, but in fact, uh, they are single-layered cells. Now, you're, you're going to notice that 
the nuclei are not lined up, as in the columnar epithelium, the pseudostratified columnar, the, the, in it, the nuclei are going to uh, be kind of scattered. But pseudo means false, and many cells are ciliated. So here we see the cilia. This is the apical surface. This is the basal surface. You can see how they're columnar cells, but they don't quite match up as nicely as the simple columnar. These are pseudostratified, so they're almost stratified. They just don't quite line up, so these are called pseudostratified epithelium. Okay, so stratified epithelium involves two or more layers. And these are the most widespread uh, of the stratified, or the, the stratified squamous epithelium are the most widespread of the stratified epithelium. The stratified squamous, remember squamous is squished, so this is going to be many layers of squished epithelium. They uh, are located in high wear and tear areas, like the skin. So the stratified nature is what gives a lot of strength. And there is, there is much keratinization of these cells. And that's found in the skin. And then there are non-keratinized cells found in moist linings. OK, here's an example of stratified squamous epithelium. You've got your uh, apical surface up here. This is your lumen. We've got many different layers, layers of squamous epithelium. And then we've got our basement membrane down here. Now the stem cells, as I indicated, start at the basement membrane and they move outward. If this is skin, the outer covering is going to be dead skin. And there's going to be constant movement of new cells that move uh, toward the outside that are pushed out as the skin regenerates. Okay, stratified cuboidal epithelium. These are not all that common uh, in human tissue, but some are found in sweat and mammary glands. Uh, and typically, the stratified cuboidal epithelium are only one to two layers thick, okay? Or two cell, two cell layers thick, excuse me. One would be simple cuboidal epithelium. Two cell layers or more would be stratified cuboidal epithelium. You also have stratified columnar epithelium. These are also very limited. They're found a little bit in the pharynx, the male urethra, some glandular ducts. And then we've got uh, transition epithelium. This is, this is line, uh, the layer that lines hollow urinary organs like the bladder. And the transitional epithelium is great for stretching. So here we've got transition epithelium. We've got the basement membrane, the apical surface, and we've got a number of different uh, epithelial cell types. Looks like cuboid uh, that seems to get a little bit bigger. And this would be a good example of what you see in the bladder. And in the bladder, when the bladder is distended, this basement membrane is stretched out and doesn't have all these little ripples in it. Uh, and this, this apical membrane uh, is, is stretched out uh, to hold the, uh, the urine. It permits stretching, distension, and it lines the ureters, the bladders, and part of the urethra. Okay, glandular epithelium. So gland is one or more cells that makes and secretes an aqueous fluid called a secretion. Now this can be one of two different modes. It could be endocrine, which is internally secreted uh, into blood vessels, like hormones. And then you have exocrine, which is secreted externally into the surface like sweat. So endocrine would be using the circulatory system and exocrine would be using uh, the, the outside. So uh, here's an example of a couple different types of epithelium. We've got um, this epithelial gland. You've got invagination of your epithelium uh, producing the gland. Uh, there can also be 
uh, a gland cell uh, in the bottom portion of this duct that will create uh, some species and efflux it. And then we've got the endocrine glands, which are juxtaposed to blood vessels. So whatever they secrete is going to then uh, pass through the blood vessels and circulate until they find their target organ. There are, uh, the endocrine glands are ductless glands, and so they, they secrete into the circulatory system, and a lot of this is hormones. Excrine glands are secreted into the body surface, such as skin or body cavities. They're more numerous than endocrine glands, and they secrete the products into ducts like sweat, oil, saliva, mucus. These exocrine glands can be unicellular or multicellular. The unicellular exocrine glands uh, are the mucus cells and the goblet cells, and they produce what's called mucin. Mucin is, is, is mucus, very slimy, lubricating. Here we've got a goblet cell. It's a unicellular exocrine gland. Uh, we've got the uh, the lumen of the gland here, uh, secretory vessels containing, uh, I'm sorry, this, this is actually the, the cell showing secretory vessels getting ready to exocytose uh, somehow. There are different methods that the contents of the cell will go out the apical portion of this membrane. We've got the nucleus and the basal portion. So multicellular exocrine glands are composed of a duct and a secretory unit, and they're classified by structure and mode of secretion. So the structure, we've got a simple exocrine gland. These are unbranched. Compound glands are branched in a tubular gland there's a duct, whereas in an alveolar gland, there are sacs. Okay, so we've got a uh, simple duct structure, um, tubular, simple tubular here. Uh, this is branched tubular. And then the compound ducts, um, you can see there are many different branches, and so they're, co they're compound tubular. So the simple uh, tubular will be found in the intestines, simple branch we found in the stomach, compound tubular will be found in the small intestine. Then looking at alveolar glands, these are secretory, you've got simple alveolar, these are formed sacs, uh, simple branched alveolar, uh, which, 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 which the sacs then produce oil Compound alveolar, like the mammary glands, these are actually pretty poorly characterized. And then compound tubulo alveolar, like salivary glands. The compound tubulo alveolar are like the compound uh, tubules, just that um, they are uh, alveolar instead of tubular secretory glands. Okay, so these glands, these exocrine glands, have a few different modes of secretion. So this is how the product that are in vesicles of the gland, how they actually get to the outside, to the apical surface, where uh, they're gonna dump their contents. So the first one, and the most common, is the miracrine. And this is just by exocytosis. So it's sweat, uh, also seen in the pancreas with uh, different types of enzymes but the movement of the vesicles goes to the apical membrane, it fuses with the apical membrane, and then exocytosis its contents into the, into the apical membrane. You also have holocrine glands, and these will accumulate pressure and all of a sudden pop, okay? Like sebaceous glands, sebaceous oil glands. 
Then we've got a, a, another type, apocrine. These are pretty poorly characterized in the human body, but uh, these would also rupture, but it doesn't lead to uh, disruption of the whole cell. It's only part of the cell gets affected when it ruptures, the, the apical portion, uh, which, which is then regenerated. Okay, so here is a merocrine gland showing the uh, apical surface here. You've got uh, vesicular transport of the contents, exocytosing out and into the gland, where it's going to then spill in adjacent areas. Uh, we've got holocrine, where pressure develops and this pops like a pimple. And I don't have a merocrine there. Okay, so there are four classes of connective tissue. We've got uh, connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. This is a pretty good table that you could spend some time with. So it looks at the uh, classes of connective tissue as well as the subclasses. So we've got uh, connective tissue proper, uh, which we're going to look at. There's loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue. Um, then we've got cartilage, which is made up of uh, hyaline, elastic, or fibrocartilage. We'll look at what produces the tissue, what produces the matrix. Other tissues are like bone, and we'll go into this more, but bone comes in compact and spongy. And then blood is another type of tissue. So three characteristic, characteristics makes connective tissue different from other primary tissues. So the connective tissues all have a common embryonic origin, and they arise from the mesenchyme. There are varying degrees of vascularity, so cartilage would be avascular, that's having no blood vessels, whereas bone would be highly vascular. There's a lot of blood in bone. And cells are suspended or embedded in extracellular matrix, which supports them, bears the weight, withstands tension. All the connective tissues have three main elements. There's a ground substance, there are fibers, and there are cells. So the ground substance is this gel-like material that fills the space and allows diffusion. The connective tissue fibers come in collagen, elastin, or reticulin. Collagen are the strongest and most abundant. Uh, elastin are thin uh, fibers that produce stretching. These are going to be somewhat wavy, wavy, and they'll establish uh, some recoil. And then reticular, which are short, fine, highly branched collagenous fibers. And these networks are, are going to allow for stretching as well. The different cells of connective tissue are the fibroblasts. These are the cells which are going to secrete the, the connective tissue. So fibroblasts are found in connective tissue proper. Chondroblasts are found in cartilage. And osteoblasts are found in bone. I don't have this in red, but hemopoietic uh, stem cells are also in bone. These are uh, cells. They're stem cells, so they produce many different types of cells. And this is of the blood lineage. Other types of connective tissue, fat cells, which store nutrients, white blood cells, which respond to injury, mast cells, which will initiate local inflammation through dumping histamine, uh, macrophages that eat uh, the debris, microorganisms, dead cells, invading uh, cells. Okay, so here is a... Uh, a little cartoon of um, alveolar connective tissue. This is a model, but you've got your ground substance with all of the, the background uh, kind of blue color. You've got your collagen fibers, these thick fibers that run the length of the uh, matrix. Elastin fibers, which are thinner, 
uh, and the reticular fibers, which are very branched. Now, last in, you, you might see a waviness to this and, and, and some order that's not present in this diagram. But the different cell types are fat cell, mast cell, white blood cells, fibroblasts. Okay, so there are four main classes of connective tissue. There's a connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. Uh, this is a, a good figure showing how the connective tissue uh, is divided into four parts. The cartilage is then divided further into haline, elastic, or fibrocartilage, whereas the connective tissue proper is divided into loose or dense. The loose is alveolar, adipose, or reticular, whereas the dense is regular, irregular, or elastic. So connective tissue proper, and this would be all connective tissue except for bone, cartilage, and blood, but the, uh, there's loose connective tissues, alveolar, adipose, and reticular, and there's dense connective tissues, dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. The alveolar connective tissues are most widely distributed connective tissue. They support and bind other tissues. They're kind of the universal packing material, and they contain a lot of uh, fibroblasts that secrete this matrix, and mostly collagen fibers. And so here, here we have our loose alveolar. You see a lot of white space. This is what makes it loose. A lot of elastic fibers. The ground substance is kind of the background white. You've got fibroblasts, uh, and you can see their nuclei. And the fibroblasts are secreting this collagen. Okay, let's go to adipose tissue. It's white fat. It's similar to alveolar tissue, but uh, there's just a lot more packed into each cell, and each cell is called an adipocyte. And so these are the adipocytes. You see they're packed with triglyceride. You've got the nuclei uh, on the outside. This is the, you know, the plasma membrane. So the fat cells function as fuel, as insulation, and as protection. Loose connective tissues can also be reticular. So this is, these are tissues that, that resemble alveolar, but the fibers are thinner The uh, fibroblast cells are called reticular cells, which, which will secrete thin collagen. And so here we've got uh, loose reticular, so it's not alveolar, it's, it, there's not as much air uh, in this uh, section. You still see the ground substance, but you see these reticular fibers, which are highly branched. And instead of fibroblasts, you'll see a lot of lymphocytes. Three varieties of dense connective tissue. There's dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. Dense regular has a high tensile strength, can withstand a lot of tension and stretching. They're closely packed. Uh, here's an example um, of this is a tendon, and so you're looking at uh, some pretty dense connective tissue. You can't see uh, a lot of ground substance at all, but these uh, are, uh, you're looking at collagen fibers and the nuclei of these fibroblasts which are, which are secreting this collagen. So these are uh, dense, regular, proper connective tissue. So this would constitute a tendon, a ligament, or an aponeurosis. Dense irregular connective tissues are uh, the same components as dense regular, but the bundles of collagen uh, are thicker and irregularly arranged. They form sheets rather than bundles, and they resist tension from many different directions, so they're great for the skin, for fibrous joint capsules, or fibrous covering of some organs. And so here we see it's a dense tissue. It's definitely not alveolar. 
You see the nuclei of the fibroblasts, a lot of collagen that's been secreted by these fibroblasts. It's irregular, the pattern, kind of chaotic a little bit. So you would find this in like the shoulder joint, you know, fibrous capsule of organs and joints. You'd find this also in the skin, as well as the submucosa of the digestive tract. Okay, so uh, elastic fibers are also dense. Uh, you can see how they, they form this, this wavy pattern. So this is elastin. Uh, they're, they're great for uh, allowing stretch and recoil of that, which you would see in a large artery. Okay, cartilage is, uh, cartilage is secreted from the chondroblasts. This is during growth or the chondrocytes, which are the mature cartilage secreting cells. We're gonna look more at this, but the chondrocytes are found in lacunae. They are avascular, so they don't, uh, they don't have blood that comes uh, to give them nutrients. They have to rely more on diffusion and transport. Okay, uh, three types of car cartilage. There's haline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. So the haline cartilage appears shiny and bluish, kind of like glass. Uh, the elastic cartilage is similar to haline, but with more elastic fibers, you get more of this waviness. And the fibrocartilage, uh, the properties between haline and dense regular tissue, uh, which are found in intervertebral discs, uh, the knee. Okay, so here's some cartilaginous haline tissue. The, these, this, uh, these are the chondrous blasts or chondrocytes that are secreting the cartilage, and uh, they they live in this these little holes, these little lacuna, uh, in between this matrix, which is uh, which is cartilage or or bone. The elastic cartilage uh, is very similar to the haline, except for it has these reticular fibers, or these elastic fibers. They're uh, pretty branched. And then the fibrocartilage, um, there are a number of uh, fibrocytes which are secreting the collagen, um, chondrocytes which are going to produce uh, the the cartilage or, or bone. Okay, then we go to bone. Bone is also called osseous tissue. It supports and protects body structure, stores fat, synthesizes blood cells in its cavities. That's why people chew their bones. Uh, has more collagen compared to cartilage. Uh, and this uh, matrix is gonna be made of inorganic calcium salts. The osteoblasts are what produce the matrix, whereas the osteocytes maintain the matrix inside this lacunae. And they reside in units called osteons. The bone is highly vascularized. There are a lot of blood vessels that, that bring nutrients and other precursor cells to it. So here we've got to look um, at at bone, and this is the osteon, and you can see there. It's difficult to see the lacuna, but they're they're little holes. High magnification shows them a little better. There's a central canal, and this is what produces strong bone. Blood is also a connective tissue. Uh, red blood cells are the most common types, but you also have white blood cells and platelets. Here is a picture of blood. We've got a white blood cell here, another white blood cell here, plasma in between, uh, maybe some platelets or bacteria here. Okay, let's get into muscle. So muscle is highly vascularized, uh, and these are what's responsible for movements, and they, they uh, possess myofilaments. 
made of actin and myosin, which bring about contraction. They're skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Skeletal muscle attaches to and causes movement of bones. It's voluntary. Uh, the muscle fibers, uh, they end up fusing with development, so they contain multiple nuclei. That's from the myotubes fusing. Uh, and they appear striated or banded. And so here we've got a skeletal muscle. We've got these striations, these bandings. And you can see the uh, blood vessels Cardiac muscle found in the walls of the heart. This is involuntary, but it is striated. There is branching of cells and connection. Each cell is connected with the intercalated disc. This is how the electrical activity can spread from one portion of the heart to the next. So here we've got cardiac muscle. We've got the myotubes here. Uh, we've got a blood vessel here, blood vessel here nuclei, an intercalated disc between two different myotubes. We can see by the cartoon that there's branching, but they have one nuclei each. Okay, smooth muscle. This is formed in the hollow organs uh, other than the heart. Um, there are no striations, and the cells are spindle-shaped. So this is an example of smooth muscle uh, we've got the smooth muscle cells with their one nuclei. They're spindle shaped, you can see. And these are going to be present in uh, the walls of arteries and veins um, and in uh, hollow organs as well. Nervous tissue, made up of the brain, spinal cord, and nerves, is what regulates and controls body function. Uh, the neurons are specialized cells that generate these action potentials, which we'll look at, and there are various supporting cells. So the nervous tissue, you can see this neuron looks like a pyramidal cell, uh, and it's got its, uh, its diff dendrites and, and processes, which connect to other neurons uh, to modulate their signals. But the neurons have uh, an axon, a dendrite, a cell body, and a neural process. Okay, so um, an epithelium uh, is bound to underlying connective tissue proper, and these come in three different uh, kinds, the cutaneous membranes, the mucous membranes, and the serous membranes. So cutaneous is another name for skin, it's going to be keratinized, so a lot of keratin in these cells, stratified squamous epithelium. This will be your epidermis. And then below that will be your dermis. So the cutaneous membrane is the skin. Uh, there is also mucosa, um, also called mucosae. It's lines body cavities that are open to the exterior, like digestive, respiratory, urogenital, this membrane is moist because there's a lot of secretions. And uh, the epithelial sheet lies over some loose connective tissue called lamina propria, which might secrete mucus. And so this um, mucus membranes are, are present in the respiratory um, as well as gastrointestinal portions. Serous membranes, also called serosae, found in closed ventral body cavities. These are conducted or constructed from simple squamous epithelium. There's the parietal serosa, which lines the uh, body cavity walls, and the visceral, which covers the organs. So once again, parietal lines the walls, and visceral covers the organs. And the cavity between them is filled with, uh, with a serous fluid. It could be pleura of the lungs, pericardium of the heart, or peritoneum of the abdomen. Okay, so here we show uh, the viscera, and uh, there's a visceral peritoneum, as well as a parietal peritoneum, whether you're covering the organs or covering 
the hollow chamber in which the organs reside. You have the same with the lungs. Uh, the wall of the, the thoracic cavity is lined with the parietal pleura, where is the lungs are lined with the visceral pleura. Okay, uh, repair is a function uh, of the inflammatory process. And there's regeneration. Uh, the epithelium regenerates many different ways. And there's fibrosis, which is a type of regeneration, but instead of regenerating the cells, you uh, replace it with uh, fibrous connective tissue. And so the first stage is inflammation. This sets the stage for regeneration. So you have release of inflammatory chemicals and this causes dilation of blood vessels, uh, increasing of blood uh, vessel permeability. And so here we've got our uh, epidermis, it looks like, um, and down to the dermis, which we'll get more into next chapter. But inflammation caused by infiltrating white cells uh, is the first process. Then uh, blood supply is restored as blood vessels are dilated and uh, neo uh, blood vessels are encouraged to grow. Here we've got um, budding capillaries. This is uh, angiogenesis, so the creation of blood vessels. Uh, then we've got regeneration and fibrosis um, where uh, fibrous tissue matures, um, thickens, and starts to regenerate the epithelium with some uh, scar tissue. Uh, regeneration and fibrosis. So in this area that was damaged, there is going to be a uh, lay down of a lot of fibrous connective tissue. That would be fibrosis. So tissue that regenerates extremely well are epithelial tissues like bone, alveolar connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, blood forming tissues. Tissues with moderate regenerating capacity would be smooth muscle. Tissues with no regenerating capacity would be like the cardiac muscle or nervous tissue. They, they don't regenerate. There, there are not a lot of stem cells in cardiac tissue, so there's not a lot of cells that are ready to divide to produce new cardiomyocytes. Okay, scar tissue. Scar tissue uh, forms really to strengthen the organ that has lost uh, some cells due to injury. Okay, let's talk about germ layers really quickly. So in development, there are three different germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And these form all the different cells in the adult body. So these germ layers are formed very early in embryonic development. The nervous tissue arises from ectoderm. The muscle and connective tissues arise from mesoderm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and the epithelial tissues arise from all three germ layers. As you age, tissue repair is less efficient. Number of mutations uh, of DNA can, can cause cancer in these areas. Okay, so here is uh, an example of the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. These are germ layers. These layers are going to migrate and interact and and differentiate to produce all the layers in the organism. So uh, in the 16-day-old embryo, we've got uh, our ectoderm, which is gonna form the nervous tissue, the mesoderm, which is gonna form the muscle, uh, and the endoderm, um, which, which forms kind of all three. <clears throat> okay, that is the chapter. In a nutshell, uh, I will see you um, for chapter five. Thank you very much.